The Rainbow Sponge, created by D. Gruning of Posh Impressions and meticulously manufactured by Ranger Industries, is one of the most versatile and fascinating art tools ever seen. No other tool, and certainly no other sponge, will produce the colorful results with variations you will see in the next half hour. D will amaze you with easy methods and stunning effects that create original backgrounds to be used for one-of-a-kind greeting cards, announcements, invitations, place cards, posters, banners, and even calligraphy. So relax and enjoy. Here's D. You asked for it. So here goes. A whole video devoted to the rainbow sponge. I know you love color just as much as I do, because every time I show this crazy, wonderful sponge on the Carol Duvall Show, we get besieged by calls. I plan to show you a bazillion ideas in 30 minutes. Now, remember, this is video. You can speed me up, calm me down, and turn me off. That's my husband's favorite line. Anytime you want to. So here goes. Are you ready? Let's get started with the tools. Doesn't take a lot of tools to get started, but one thing basic to this technique is the sponge. Now, not a normal sponge, not a makeup wedge. Is This is so dense, it's been compressed, oh, so many times, and it doesn't pop up in water three sizes because I can't stand just one size and we'll get into all the uses of those sizes later. Now another key is ink. Now I began with pens, they weren't juicy enough and then we just went right to the source and that is pure ink, a dye base ink as you would use in an ink pad. Now it's been formulated specially, so you could use dye base inks, but this is the best. And my wish, oh it's just so fun to design a project, you get everything you want, is to have a needle nose re-inker. Oh, this you can get detailed. We love control. And I can put a dot on the edge of this sponge, as you'll see. Now, of course, I want this in every color under the sun, just like the Marvy Brush Art Markers. 108 is just about enough. Now we have more than 36, we have about 40 colors. And I have divided them into sets, just so you'll know and be able to see them. Uh, if you're shopping around, we have Floral Brights, we have Country French, brand new, brand new. Um, I have put them, if I love, sponging and stamps first. I love containers second. What woman doesn't? Uh, so I have converted them from sets to here. So all those colors make a difference. Now another thing that I want to talk about is the hygiene of the sponge because I know you're going to ask. You would think, oh do I harm this edge? What you have is one, two, three, four, five, six. You have so many edges you use before your sponge is all used up. Let me go to one of my used up or partially used up sponges so you'll see. Every edge has been used. Oops, a virgin edge. I still can use and put inks on that, especially yellow ink. Now, when this gets completely used, there are two ways you can look at it. Get about five or six sponges, that's what I do. And every time you use a sponge, use a different dry edge. Or you can try to clean this sponge. Well, I went to the sink. I squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. No flab on this arm for my cleaning, flab on this arm. But it's a wonderful exercise until you see pure water running. When you see pure water running, you put this on a paper towel. Now this has been cleaned, but it does not look clean, but it is clean. You still could put it under water the next day. It takes a day to dry. It's so dense. But it will be cleaned. Sometimes I've even put it in the washing machine on the delicate cycle in a mesh bag. Now one other or two other tools. When you start working with sponges that have a lot of ink still left in them, Gloves are incredible. I get these by the dozens just in case I'm going out that night. <laughs> now, 
If you do get it on your hands, go to the beauty supply and get what I call, or what they call, a pumice sponge. You go underneath the water and just go on your hands and all the ink will come off. Uh, easy to find. Now, let's get into real spongy. Here we go. Now, I have a pure, oh, I love a sponge that is absolutely pure. Now let's get down to it. These needle nose reinkers. You take the ink and it goes on the edge, such as I'm doing. I'm kind of doing this at a little bit of an angle. And I don't squeeze too much because this is pure ink. Oh my gosh, it's so, um, great. Now, I'm going to put a color next to it. I want you to know that you can start doing some design work by leaving a little space. Oh my gosh, what color. I'm working from the Caribbean Sea colors. I must admit, these are my favorite. Oh, but the country French. Oh, brand new, brand new. Or a second, and then, oh, I like the Broadway brights. This is awful. I mean, you'll have no trust on me because I like everything, but that's the fun of it. I wouldn't have produced it if it didn't give a good effect. Okay, now we're putting as many colors. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm making sure it's covering the edge. And these naturally blend together, so we don't have to have them touch, but you can have them touch and blend. Sometimes I keep yellow a little bit separate. Boy, let's go with these colors. Oh. Okay. Now, I'm not even going to do the whole page. Let's get this back because I need a runway. One thing that I want to tell you about is it takes practice and it needs to get your hand out of the way. I am not spritzing this with water at all. Now, watch this. I did, oh, I am sorry, but this is exciting. Look at this color. I mean, where can you get color like that? Now, notice I'm turning this upside down again. Oh! Now, to make it faster and easier, I want you to look at all of those wiggles. <laughs> Are they fun or what? Now, every time I use this sponge, it will get lighter and lighter. Sometimes I do, you know, a softer wiggle. And sometimes I do a zigzag. Oh my gosh. Now, here's a softer rendition where you see more white streaks. And here are wiggles. Oh my gosh. I call that California seismographic look. Now, of course you can go straight. I'm going to quickly show you that you can take this sponge and do, oh my gosh. <gasps> Now, you see how my hand is out of the way? Look at this pure color. Now, I just don't do backgrounds, duh. I put stamping on the foregrounds. And these are some of my, I think, just incredible duet stamps where I take a solid stamp and then I do an over stamp. All right. Now, on to, once you've done this, you have not seen anything until you've seen a plaid. Okay, I go at right angles, whoops, this is what you don't want, a hiccup. I'm so glad that happened because you don't want it. You have to hold on to the paper tight. Look at that plaid. I'm going to cover up the area that I had a hiccup. Where can you get a plaid like that? You just can't. And here are some plaids. <gasps> Are they incredible or what? And then when I add stamps on top, that's what they look like. Now I'm going to spritz this with water in our next section. You get the purest form from the ink itself, but when you add water, oh my gosh, it extends the life of the sponge. 
Sometimes I ink a sponge and go back a week later and spritz it with water and I still get some ink. Now, I've inked this ahead to go faster. I'm going to spritz water on it. Now I wait a little, I'm not going to wait now, but if you are doing this in your own home, you know, count to 20 so that the water connects with the ink. Now let's do a straight pattern. Again, keep your hand out of the way. I'm putting it kind of above and we'll go straight across. <gasps> okay, calm down, D. <gasps> this is the square sponge and then I finish up up here. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> My husband keeps saying, don't admire your work so much. It's the sponge. It's the sponge. Now, this technique on the different sizes looks like this. Look at those. Look at the array. Now, there's another technique. You can go at a diagonal. I don't even need to show that because you can see you just turn your paper at a slant. Now, another trick is to go along, same sponge, and leave a little white space area in between for a different look. Now, do you notice how quickly this is drying? But I'm still putting my nails, hope you have some, on top rather than my hand to get a, a fingerprint. So I have lines and then this is what this looks like. Now remember the variation is in the different sizes of the sponge. Okay, we've done that. Now, one of my favorite things. Let, let's show some stamps on here. I'm going to spritz this with water again while you're looking at that. Now, I take stationery. You know, Everybody has imprinted stationery. If I don't have time to stamp something, I go across my stationery with this and it's done. I fold it in an envelope and I even can take the envelope and go across it. And I want you to notice this was not glossy paper. Yes, I'm married to glossy paper. I love glossy. And the only reason I use glossy so much is it's not using up the ink. Now, let's go to plaids. Oh, let's just take this and go across. I usually don't do a plaid. Oh, I love plaids. Now see, these are creamy plaids as opposed to the plaids that we did in the dry video. Now here's a board of plaids. It just depends what you use. Oh. Now a plaid's going to look different on top of this other. And here are some diagonal plaids. And you can see where we've left little white holes in between on uh, one on that side. Now, every time, I want you to know, people have said, why haven't you made pastel ink? You know, I can't believe there's some people that like pastel, but there are, I haven't met them yet. But every time you spritz this with water, it gets softer. Yes, do you see that? So, when I get a pastel look and do it on a plaid, it's like that. I have to speak softly when I say pastel. Now, let's go back to Bright. You can see a wonderful grouping of either stamping on top or frames. In this case, I'm using sticker paper on top, but if it's pastel, I stamp right on it. Like a soft thing, I just stamp right over it. Okay, curved. That's easy to understand. You just take it and curve it like a rainbow. Okay, curve designs. Now this is fun. I'm going to go to another color scheme. So it's going to be bright again, something that I've inked up because you have to see something different. Now, look at this. You can stop at just oh, earth tone, just a wiggle across. Oh, I love that. Look at this. This can be a background for a card. Just one thing. I mean, how easy is that? But then, you know me, I love to wiggle the whole thing. <laughs> and to add to that wiggle, you just continue and follow your same pattern. Here's the soft look. Oh, and then when we take stamps on top, look at that. Oh. Now, I've got to go to this zigzag. 
Look at that. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Oh, I just get so into it. Here are a bunch of zigzags. You see how creamy it is with water. So when it gets dry, all you do is spritz it with water. This I call a, uh, uh, it's like the NBC Peacock. I'm doing it large so you see. Now you see I'm getting dry here, so I'll add more water to this. And I'm just doing it. It takes a little bit of practice, but oh, you will over, you'll overwhelm your friends. See how I'm doing that? It's like a flame stitch in interior design. Then I go back and follow the same. Now, to go underneath, I'll turn it upside down and go with it. Is this fun or what? <laughs> OK, here are a whole bunch of flame patterns. And then when it gets drier and drier, like getting those few extra um, lines through it, oh, you can see here. All that white showing through. I love every look of it. And that's the fun. What you want to do is get just tons of paper because you'll be going through it. Okay, the twist. I just have to show you this quickly. There's just so much to show. This is the bow tie twist. Look at that. <laughs> How easy is that? Just twist it, and oh, with every size sponge, I twist, 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 twist. Uh, and it's not a dance. <laughs> OK, now another thing I decide, I found out when I was doing this is edge pulling. OK, I take this, and I go a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, until I do my whole piece of paper Oh, with the edges. I can do it straight. I can do it diagonally. Look at those edges. This is on one sponge. Well, I switched to another color scheme so you could see the earth tones. And then you can crisscross. Just go the other direction. And then, I start sounding like the Vegematic Lady, you can do what I call my pickup sticks. Now, let me show you up close here how I do that because it's real easy. I just drop my sponge and go all different directions like picking up sticks. <laughs> it's every day we come up with new methods of doing this. When I finish designs with the, those fun backgrounds, they look like this. You can see the backgrounds. Oh, and do the stationery. And remember, you do not need a glossy look and a lot of times I'm taking big envelopes. This is like Xerox paper. You know, these, it's like a catalog envelope. I'll take it and I will quickly decorate it with a stripe across. Oh, now we're going to get on to even more ideas with different size sponges. So let's get going. I was just fine with this size sponge for about a year until the Army Arts and Crafts Department sent me to Korea. Oh my gosh, I don't know whether you've seen in malls, but the way the Koreans can write out names. Here's the way they did mine. Now, I looked. They weren't using a sponge. They were using something that I wish I knew what it was because I wanted it. I wanted to do this. But when I looked at it, I thought, if I had my sponge in half, I could do this. Now, let's show you. I now, remember, you can't do this in your own home. Cut this in half. I have it, and I am going to. I have already put ink. I've spritzed it with water. Now. I'm not going to write yet because I want to show you how I can just do an edge on a card ah! with this small sponge. When I do an edge, I do both sides. Then I go back and make the plaid in the corner. Oh my gosh. I just. Now you remember, I'm always, sometimes I'm blocking this, but I'm holding my hand on the upside. Now, this is perfect stage for a stamp design. Now, here we have 
some examples, as you can see. And then I have put, sometimes I do it all the way over with lines in between. You know how I do it. Sometimes I take the sponge, only put one color on it, but do several sponges. And I get that look. Do you see? It's unlimited. Unlimited. Now I've already, already shown you the borders, but I have to show you more. And then the stage for a duet design. <sighs> okay, let's get into ribbon weaving. This is a look that is just will knock your socks off. Same sponge. Now, I leave that little bit of room at the beginning and room in between, room in between, room, room. Now, you see I'm not perfectly straight, does not matter <laughs> because you put your design over it. Now, I'm going in a plaid but leaving that same space. <gasps> <sighs> Breathing heavy. <laughs> and look at that. Okay, here are some more. This is, it looks like ribbon weave. And when I finish and put stamps over it, there are some examples. Sometimes I leave a white area. I can also do that diagonal with a larger, you know, like the edge of a larger sponge. Then I can swish. Oh, gee, is that fun. Swishing. And then swishing with stamping. Now, let's, we've got to write out a name. You will never believe this because this is a flat edge. It works like a calligraphy pen. And if you do calligraphy, you'll have fun. If you don't, you can just do plain writing. It'll still look fabulous. Okay, let's just write the name Sue. Because it S-U-E. <laughs> How hard is that? Now I go nuts. I write little names at everybody's place, place cards. I will do a name on an envelope. I mean, I love the big envelopes. Take a look at these. Everyone loves to see their name in lights. So their first name is large, and then I do decoration around it. Oh, it's just so much fun. Enough of rainbow riding. We've got to get on with our next section. This is the tiled effect. And the dirtier your sponge, the better. After you've used every single corner, go to this method. In fact, you'll probably want to push this method and dirty some corners just on purpose. Now, after they have all of this ink, I fill them in with color. I just take the re-inkers and fill them in. Now, this is one I did about three weeks ago. I'm going to spritz it with water. It's all filled in. I get my gloves because it's dirty all on the side and I put my glove on so that I won't have my hands so dirty. Now, I take this and I press down, just like I'm stamping a stamp. Ah! Wow! I have now a background that I can put a stamp on top of. And you see, a different size sponge is fine, too. Now, here's what I do. I put a small duet inside each one. I write on the outside a word, and I have a finished uh, card. OK, now you can go all over, how easy is that, and have a nice background with this sponge, like I've done here. And examples on it, you can almost stamp directly on top because this is pale. Remember I did this three weeks ago. Now, if I get one that I've done a little bit more recently and add water to it, let's see what we do. And I'm going to go on to what I call 
the tile method. In fact, this was shared with me. We had a weekend getaway, and one of the students, oh, oh my gosh, came up with this idea, and I've been running with it. Look at these tiles. Now I go over here. Yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and over here, this isn't hard to line up at all. It's like tiles by the swimming pool. And then one more here. And look at this. Oops, we got to catch it over there. How fun is that? Now, I have done tiles until I'm blue in the face. I could do this all night. In fact, this is a wonderful way to relax or get excited and then never go to sleep. Now, I take those tiles and put a different stamp image in each one. So it's a whole different composition. Now, you can do the tiles with all the different sizes. You take your little one and get it like a little um, gingham or your long skinny one and get another look. You also can take this and go along with chunks along the side, as I've done here. Whoops. I've done it like this. And then, when you put, you're making a stage. You put a design in the middle for a center of interest. Oh, now this next, you don't even need a stamp with. It's just incredible. Now I want to do this on fabric. I, I, I want to do it all. Uh, it's just letting you know that tons is going to be coming up. Now again, a customer that was using this sponge came up with this idea. I was just filling it in with color and she said, what if you took, well, what if you took, she didn't listen to my instructions in a class and she just started drawing on the side of the sponge. And again, you might think that you do this on a pure white sponge, but when you do it on a dirty background sponge, it's even better. Now I took a color there, let's take another one here. And I'm just, as I said, drawing on the back. I've done a couple of designs ahead. Um, because I don't want to take any time. Here's stream. Oh, what shall I do in the center? Let me just do a zigzag that keeps coming in smaller. This is the fun of these needle nose reinkers because you can get control. All right, there. Now, let's stamp it out. Now, first I do it before I have water. I mean, do you see the doodling, the fun? Every, as I say, every night I will do this until I either am ready for bed or I'm so excited I'll go into the night. And not only can you go in a row, you can go where, just like before, now I spritz this with water so it gets more mellow or more exciting, you can do the three-tiled method. Now, I have another sponge here that I've inked up that I'm just dying to see what will happen as we do a regular tile. Okay, let's put this down here. Then go along here and here and here. All right, and then over here and here. And we're blocking and blocking until we get an entire design. Again, you can leave space in the center or, oh, I mean, a wonderful rich background. And the thing of it is with this one, oh my gosh, I'm going to show you. You can get, it's like I've got to learn how to quilt because if you do it one direction, you may want to turn it around. Now, i got to think. If I did it up this way, I can go this way and carry the zigzag down. Now, think, go this way, and now we zigzag. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look, this is making a, oh, I can't stand it. Oh, my gosh. Look at that time. Okay. 
Now, I know I have done this before. I can calm down and show you some of the things that I've done and how I've made that whole big tile right over here and how I've done wiggles. You almost can see how I've done my sponge. You will not believe this, but I can go on for about 20 different cards because of so much ink in the sponge. Now, every time it becomes lighter and lighter, so you can do a whole grouping. Now, you just have to see. I'm just going to take a minute to show you my prize possessions. Okay, the other night, when I couldn't sleep, I did this. This was my first generation. Then I went on to this. Do you see how we're matching everything up? <sighs> then I went on to a diagonal with it. <sighs> then it gets lighter. Now this was a pure sponge without any background. Then I spritzed it. Oops, one more. Then I spritzed it with water. This is the same sponge. Look at how the background came out. And then now it becomes like a floor tile. And then white in between. And then, the, and the, overkill. OK. Then, look at this design. And this. And this. All of the different arrangements. Then water is added. And then straight. And then, oh, book. Oh, this was one night that I did not sleep. Look at it soft with water, and then we have a stripe, then wiggles, and then heavy around the edge. Oh, I could go on and on and on, but this is ridiculous. I have to do a more advanced sponge video after this. Now I'm going to show you next all the things that I sponge on. my gallery of examples. Now, there are many other surfaces that you can sponge on. I told you that. Now, I'm going to show you wood. I take, I've already inked this sponge. I'm going to spritz it and hold it on the side. And this is a wooden postcard. Yes. And I go all the way across and get it on wood. Now, finished up, it looks like this. I mean, wouldn't that, this is a gift in itself when you send it through the mail. Now, another fun thing is, is taking frames. Uh, again, let me spritz up. This is a sponge we used before. And I just go right along the outside of the border. Oh, my gosh. And just go all the way around, and we've decorated the frame. I won't finish. I'll show you a finished one. Now, that isn't all. Journals I have done. Bookmarks I've done. Oh, you can see. Let me bring them closer. Now, someone, Robin Bean to be exact, sent me the most incredible thing, and like an accordion card, all with different things that she had done with a sponge. Unbelievable. I just, I get so excited. Also made me little post-it note holders. Everything has been sponged. Do you see the gifts you can make? It's just unbelievable. I do photos as cards. So I'll do a background and then do a photo. I sometimes take my edging, go around, cut out the center, and put a photo in there. <laughs> Calendar. You can take a calendar page like I have right here in front that I finished and just go across with a color scheme. And then do your stamping on top. I have a nice fingerprint that you probably can't see, but I can. Now, I go on and I love to do albums, but before I've got to tell you something. I do a lot of photos. This is a secret. <laughs> sure, it's going to be a secret after this. but. I take so many photos that I go to Costco and take, you know, I take a bunch of these ahead. 
I'll take my Costco envelope, take a sponge that does not have much ink on it, go across the top, put my information on it, put it over, I waltz up where they have a thousand photos, finished photos to pick up, and whip out my envelope with the compressed sponge or the rainbow sponge on top. It is it is, a, but I don't want you to do it if you're at my Costco. You have to sign up for the individual Costco's because I don't want a lot of these to look through. Now, albums are a journal. I took this journal, this is very absorbent paper, and on the edge I put a sponged example and took a metallic edge. Now here, album pages. They're fun to do and you see the outside line around there or the whole background being done. I went to Hawaii, I mean how perfect for the sponge. I did an entire rainbow going through all the pages. <laughs> Just perfect for a background. One last mini album because I think it's a good idea. I only took the outside page and went down with the colors that would match the photo. I mean, that is so easy and it just journaled around. Lots of fun. Now, if we do anything, we do supportive material. Uh, a brand new book out is Magical Rainbow Sponge. It will give you illustrations of everything, directions. So if you need to just sit and look at all of the different things that I've shown you on the video and have it in your hands, this is it. Now, also, Dazzling Designs by Design Originals has such a section on the rainbow sponge and, again, supportive projects and ideas. Wow. Once you get started, it is so hard to stop. And now that you know how to blaze a rainbow path across everything in sight, I want you to rainbow sponge anything that isn't moving.